Hello everyone, Pete Merrick here with Triplet3D. In this tutorial I will demonstrate how to use Sketch and Tune and Cell Rendering in Cinema 4D to achieve various line qualities for use in architectural illustrational work. Alright, so let's just jump into Cinema 4D and I'll show you my model here. Let me get rid of this camera so we don't see it. Uh, so here's my model and this is what we're going to use for for various line qualities for this project. So I'll go ahead and look through my camera. Uh, the fir very first thing I want to show you is a very simple effect called cell rendering. So all we need to do is click effect and turn this on. And then when we go to cell rendering, I'm just going to turn on my outlines. Uh, I'm going to be rendering these out at 2500 pixel width at 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and render this out. I'll specify a save path and just call this profiles and then I'll go ahead and hit render and I get a render of only my pro the outlines of all my geometry alright the next rendering that I'll do is I'll go back to the cell render and I'll turn on edges I'll go back to save and click this box right here and call this edges okay and I'll do another test or do another render and this is going to give me all the um, all the edges of my geometry as well to give us a little bit more information. Okay, next thing that I wanted to show you is how to set up Sketch and Tune. So before we do it in this scene, I'm just gonna hop over to a new scene just to kind of explain how this works. So I have all these cubes set up, right? And I wanna be able to render out a hidden line where I'm seeing all edges of the geometry. So at this point, if I take a render, I just, uh, yeah, I don't have any lighting in the scene or anything, so I'm just seeing these four cubes. So to set up the uh, sketch and tune, what we want to do is go to Effect, and then come down to Sketch and Tune. All right, so right now, if we take a render, we can see that we're getting some sort of effect from this sketch and tune material. Um, so next up, uh, we'll go into Window, Content Browser, and under Sketch, I want to go to Technical, and I'm going to import a tech 0.035 millimeter dash line. So just double click that. Uh, at this point, I could just delete the sketch material. Really don't need that. Um, still, we're getting a little bit of sketch and tune um, affecting our render. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my sketch and tune material in the render settings. Those can also be found up here in this tab right here. I'll go into the lines. I'll take this tech material Sketch and Tune Tech Material, drop it into where it says Default Visible. I'll take the same material, drop it into Default Hidden. Okay, so right now when I take a render, I'm starting to get, get these uh, dashed lines, but I'm still not seeing the lines that are hidden by this geometry, this first cube. All right, I'm not seeing this line here. I'm not seeing this line here, over here. So that's the thing that we wanna work on so we can see all the way through our material, or our geometry rather. So let's hop over to the shading tab and where it says object, I'm just gonna turn this to background and let's see how that affects our render. So now we're getting a completely white background, um, white boxes, but still we're not able to see all the way through. Uh, so this is like transparent. So what we, need to get, what we need to do is go back into the lines tab and where it says hidden call, we'll change this to objects, take another render still nothing happens so let's go one more time into this tech material so if i just click this once over here in the attribute manager we have this render tab so let's go to the render tab and where it says mode let's also change that to objects okay so right now we're able to see all the way through our cubes and see all the hidden lines okay so that that's pretty much the way it works you can always experiment with different types of line quality if you go back into your content browser there's different pencils, different pens. So experiment with all these, you can really get some interesting looks. Uh, but for right now, what I wanna do is just render out a hidden line. All right, so I'll go back to my original scene and I'm gonna go ahead and set that up in this scene. So we'll go effect, sketch and tune. And then I wanna go back to window, content browser. I'm gonna go into sketch and then technical. And again, I'm gonna choose my tech point three, five, millimeter dash line get rid of the sketch material go into the sketch and tune tab where it says lines i'll drop my sketch and tune material in here hit and call i'll change that to objects 
shading. I'll change this to background and then I'll click this material and in the render tab where it says mode, I'll change that to objects. Now I want to turn off save. I want to turn off cell render. And I'm just going to do some tests. Turn this to 600 pixel width just to see what this looks like. Okay, this is exactly what we want. We want to see all the way through the geometry, get our hidden lines. This is a very small render, so it's getting a little bit pixelated. Um, so that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my output. I'll change this back to 2500 pixel width, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And I'll hit save. And right here where it says file, I want to specify sketch and tune, uh, hidden lines. All right, save that in the renders. Uh, output 2500. Another thing you might want to do is set your anti-aliasing to best instead of geometry. And we can go ahead and render that out as well. So here's our hidden lines. And then we can composite all these back in into Photoshop, with Photoshop rather. Okay, so there's our hidden lines. Next thing that I want to do is I want to actually have some shadows that are in the scene. So I'll go into my render settings. I'll turn off save. I'll go back to output. I'll change this back to like 600 pixel width. And I'll turn off sketch and tune. All right, so right now if I take a render, I'm back to my original uh, render without any lights or sketch and tune or cell rendering on. At this point, I'm going to go in and I'm going to create one infinite light. And then I'm going to take this infinite light, I'll bring it forward a little bit, and bring it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it. And I'll rotate it down a little bit. And selecting this infinite light, what I'll do is I'll come in here and under the shadows, shadows field, I'll choose hard ray trace shadows. And I'll take another render. And now we're getting shadows in the scene. Okay, so you can go back into your view. If you need to tweak this at all, rotate this up, down, or however you need to do it to, to make sure the shadows look just like you want them. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll go back in here and just rotate this a little bit farther to the left. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's looking pretty decent. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna enable multi-pass. I'll go to multi-pass, add image layers. And then I'm gonna go to my output. 2500 pixel width and I'll go to the save to the save enable that and now I want to turn off regular image and I want to specify Photoshop 8-bit channel is fine come into here and I'm gonna just call this multi-pass render multi-pass hit save and then I'll go ahead and render that out so now that's going to give us a little bit of shadow information that we can also use in our in our composite. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to jump over to Photoshop. First, I'm going to find... So here's all my renders. Here's the first one. That's my profiles. Here's the edges. Here's my hidden lines. And I have my multi-pass rendering right here. Okay, so we're gonna open all of these up in Photoshop CS6. Drag this over here. All right, so I'm gonna use my profiles as the base. And what I'll do is I'll take my edges, I'll take the edges, select all by hitting Command A, and I'll just grab this, drag it in, into this document, I can say, click this button that says show transform controls and just move that over a little bit, double click. Now I can double click this, rename this edges and I'll put this on a multiply blend mode. Just kind of zoom in, make sure everything's lining up properly. If you need to nudge it over using the arrow tools on the um, keyboard, go ahead and do that. Okay, great. So at this point, what we want to do is let's take this hidden line. Uh, actually, I'll just drag it over like this. And again, I'm going to put this on a multiply blend mode. 
and I can name this hidden line. Okay, perfect. So at this point, now we want to go through and just um, mask some of this stuff out. So hidden lines, let's just make sure that all of these are, are lining up. That's looking good, looking good. All right, I'm gonna double click my background and just call this back. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer Throw that on the bottom. I'll just call this white and hit X on the keyboard G for the paint bucket. Fill that in with white. That'll allow us to mask out any of our layers like our background layer a little bit and still see white underneath there. So let's turn on the edges. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn this down and I'll grab it. I'll go down here in the layers palette and just create a layer mask. And then I'm going to hit B on the keyboard. Let's go through and just grab a really simple brush. And make this brush size real big. Paint with black. And I'm just going to get rid of some of these edges over here. I really don't want to show this much edges. Get rid of some of this over here on this side and just mask out the geometry of these columns. It's probably a bit too much lines in here, a bit too many lines in here. Probably want to reveal some more of these up here, something like this. All right, and just kind of look at this, see what looks good. Just mask, it, mask everything out accordingly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of these edge lines on these pipes that are sticking out over here. Just being real, real loose with this. And I can get rid of some of this over here. This is looking pretty dark, some of these lines. So I could just kind of take all these just kind of mask them out a little bit. I can probably get rid of most of these in, in, the, in here. There we go. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'll probably just turn down these hidden lines even more. So I'll take this opacity and just kind of bump it down. And then our hidden lines. So I'll take this and I'll bump this down way down. Next thing I'll do is I'll create a layer mask on this as well. And I really don't want to show these hidden lines everywhere. It's getting a little bit confusing. I just want to show, indicate a little bit, gives the drawing a little bit more depth. So I just get rid of most of them back here on this building. And what I'm going to do is just come in here, get rid of some of this stuff in here. I just want to show a little bit of this stuff just so it's, again, it gives a little bit more depth to the drawing. And this is just personal preference. You really don't have to use these lines. It's really up to you what you want to show in your illustration. But to achieve a hidden line look, that's pretty much that. Uh, another thing that I wanted, that I like to do on my illustrations is I'll come back in here and I'll create a new layer. I'll call this construction lines. Construction lines and what I'll do is I'll have black as my foreground foreground color I'll choose my line tool make sure it's set to pixels and let's just test one of these out that's way too thick so using the bracket keys on the keyboard I'll bring it down to one pixel and that's looking pretty good so what I'll do is I'll just go in here manually and recreate some of these construction lines almost like it was a hand drawing or something so it's not looking just um, so tight over here sometimes I like to loosen this up by just creating these lines back in here give it a little bit more loose feel alright okay if I can hit the edge of this line okay maybe if I zoom in there we go. Now I'm going to just indicate some of these perspective lines as well, coming back into space. Maybe something like this. Um, 
maybe we can add some over here. Again, I'm just, there's really no um, specific way that I do this. I just kind of look at the drawing and go, what does it need a little bit? And um, just kind of add some lines in where I think it would look good. You know, just imagine that you're drawing by hand. And um, I'm sure a lot of you architectural illustrators started off drawing by hand. So sometimes when you're using uh, any kind of 3D modeling package, um, the exported lines can look a little bit too tight. So this is a nice way to go back in and just add a sense of looseness to your illustrations. All right, so I'll just go back in here, add a few more of these lines, maybe a few more over here. Just kind of simulating hand-drawn construction lines. And what else? Let's say we want to add another one right here. Looks pretty good. And maybe this big form back here needs one. Something like that. Okay, so now I'm going to take these construction lines and I'll turn the opacity of these way down. And then again, I'm going to create a layer mask. Hit the B, B on the keyboard for a brush. And I'm just going to mask out like the edges of these. So it kind of looks like these lines are sort of tapering off. Like a pencil drew it. Instead of the line tool in Photoshop. You know, that just adds another dimension of um, depth and interest to the lines. Okay, so the last thing that I'll do from here is I'll grab my multi-pass image. And the only thing that I want from here is my shadow layer. So I grab this shadow layer and I just drop it right onto this image on top of it. And just make sure it lines up. What we can do is just drop this opacity down until we line it up correctly. That's looking pretty decent right there. Okay. And I can turn the opacity back up. There's our shadows. Now at this point, if you wanted to take all of your lines and shadows, make it in, put it inside of a group, we'll just call this lines, shadow. And you can go through. And if you wanted this illustration to kind of fade out on the edges, I created a layer mask on this group. And just kind of paint with black a little bit help it fade out on the edges. There you go. And at this point, you're ready to render and you have a really cool looking line drawing. So again, this is Pete Merrick with Triplet 3D. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and take care.